in a nano bio optics group in Japan. And his talk is on near field optical mechanics with the nanofiber waveguides. So let's welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Takachenko. Uh, right. Um, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, it's a really a pleasure for me to, to present our work on this conference. Um, it's a pity we cannot be there in person. Uh, we're not so far from Taiwan. Go ahead. All right. Um, all right. So uh, this work um, is uh, on near field optical mechanics with nanofiber waveguides. And it's uh, done in collaboration between uh, our team in the uh, Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology and uh, uh, some strong theoreticians from uh, Itmo University in, in uh, St. Petersburg in Russia. Uh, so I'm a part of the light matter interactions for quantum technologies unit led by Professor Sheila Nikormak. Um, hopefully you heard her talk uh, an hour ago. Um, so I'm giving some more details about uh, some aspects she touched uh, in her talk uh, and uh, uh, mostly my, my work actually concerns uh, uh, classical experiments. So there is no quantum theory but hopefully you'll find uh, some interesting uh, uh, concepts in that. Uh, so today I'm going to talk, uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce uh, you briefly to uh, optical nanofiber waveguides, how we do them, uh, how we use. Um, I'm going to talk in more detail, uh, details about the polarization control for single mode nanofibers. Um, then I'm going to focus on linear motion of small particles uh, in the near field of such fibers. Uh, in particular, propulsion, binding, uh, and then uh, our attempts to enhance the optomechanical effects by adding some metal. And uh, I'm going to talk about the rotational motion of the uh, particles um, uh, in the near field of such fibers. So first of all, what is an optical nanofiber? It is a cylindrical waveguide, which is produced from uh, a common step index optical fiber where the light is, uh, um, uh, is uh, transmitted in the form of the guided mode. And uh, we take such a fiber and apply uh, some local heating. And simultaneously, we pull the fiber uh, in both directions until the fiber, uh, the, the heated region gets uh, uh, thinner and uh, it acquires the ultra thin uh, sub wavelength diameter. And the main feature of the field, which is uh, transferred by such a fiber, it's that uh, it has this strong evanescent field, um, which doesn't propagate in the transverse direction, uh, but it has uh, quite high intensity and gradients, which is useful for our studies. Uh, so first of all, this field is strongly confined uh, and it has long range compared to the tightly focused uh, laser beam, which is only limited to a short uh, relay range. And uh, it, uh, this field is uh, allowing to achieve evanescent coupling. So if we place uh, next to the waste some, some quantum emitter, for example, we can address uh, it with, uh, uh, with this nanofiber waveguide. And uh, we can also, through this evanescent coupling, we can couple light to micro cavities um, and excite whispering gallery modes in, the, in some resonators. Uh, we can uh, do experiments with cold atoms. Uh, so this was the subject of the talk by Professor Nikormak earlier. Um, we can further structure this, this fibers at the subwavelength uh, uh, level to achieve some, uh, some refined trapping geometries or resonant features. Uh, and we can do particle manipulation about which I, I'm going to talk today. And this is uh, area of optomechanics, which is actually uh, quite a small branch of this huge tree of applications of optical nanofibers. Uh, this is taken from the review by Li Min Tong. All right, uh, so I'm going to talk about the uh, modes in optical fibers um, and uh, uh, this, um, uh, the effective refractive index is characterized uh, uh, by, by the, uh, is, is linked to the a dimensionless V number, uh, which defines the geometry of this fiber and it defines the modes which can be present in it. So if this V number is small enough, smaller than uh, like 2.4, we only have a single mode regime. So uh, the, the field is limited to fundamental modes. And uh, for the V number beyond this, uh, this value we have higher order modes where the polarization is uh, vectorial. And these pictures are 
for the weakly guided modes, um, so they are similar to free space beams. And uh, actually for nanofibers, uh, the, the field intensity profile is not actually symmetric. Uh, so uh, it tends to be uh, a high intensity um, in, the, in the polarization plane. And the same is true for the high order modes. And uh, unfortunately, we still don't know how to control the high order modes in the uh, ultra thin fibers because uh, to get information about them, we need to get access to the waste from different uh, directions. And uh, so far, it's not possible. So we are limited uh, by the single modes, uh, which, uh, uh, which we can control. And how we do that, um, uh, we, um, we consider this uh, electric field um, at the waist of the nanofiber. And uh, we express it as a, as a complex uh, superposition of two orthogonal modes, uh, fundamental modes. And uh, these complex coefficients are linked by, uh, they are making the Jones vector describing the polarization. And the Jones vectors at different places in the system are linked by this transformation Jones matrix, which is two by two uh, uh, complex element matrix. Uh, and um, recalling that this fiber is adiabatic, meaning that it transmits the energy with very low losses. Um, we can write that uh, this, we can see that this transformation is unitary. So this is the identity matrix. And this means that the transformation is, uh, is restricted to uh, only 3D rotations of the vectors for the states. And so this is the basis of our idea for the polarization control. Um, and uh, to deal with uh, real numbers, we switch to the uh, Poincare sphere um, and polarization ellipse uh, formalism. And uh, every point on the Poincare sphere is linked to the uh, Stokes vector. Um, these are real numbers and uh, they are related to these angles uh, defining the polarization ellipse. And uh, any transformation uh, of the polarization state uh, when it still stays polarized um, are defined by this uh, Müller matrix, which is a uh, four by four uh, real, real value matrix. And again, this transformation is limited to 3D rotations. Um, and our idea is to undo this rotation, which we don't know, uh, and we do so in two steps. So uh, first we send a defined uh, input state, here is a, it's horizontal, and uh, then we uh, identify it at the waist. And uh, we, uh, we adjust two quarter wave plates here, uh, which allow us to free, freely rotate the polarization on the Poincare sphere until we get this matrix of transformation to identity and the polarization state at the waist equals exactly to our input state. And uh, in the second st step, uh, we send a diagonal polarization and we have a more complicated matrix uh, because we, we here introduced the variable retarder. And when we adjust this retardance uh, of the retarder, again, we get the matrix to identity. And finally, we have the polarization state at the waist equal to uh, input polarization state. And this is true for any input state. Um, so we achieve the complete control of the polarization and uh, this is a cartoon of this method. All right, so this method is based on identification of the two uh, non-orthogonal polarization states. And uh, our first approach to actually identifying the states was to use a probe fiber. So we crossed our input fiber where we want to control the polarization with a second fiber. And at the point of the contact, there is evanescent coupling and we can uh, monitor the readouts of the power from this, from this fiber. And this helps us to identify uh, two states, uh, horizontal or vertical and near circular. And uh, then we do the polarization compensation. And uh, important result for, from this study was that when we scanned uh, the whole waste of this uh, input fiber by the output fiber, uh, we found that the polarization along the waste is constant. So it doesn't matter at which point we uh, identify the states, uh, the compensation would work for, for any point. And the compensation is quite precise. Uh, so it's uh, within six degrees on the Poincare sphere, uh, which is equivalent to a, about three degrees uh, for the polarization ellipse, which is 
good enough for most of the applications. Um, so uh, as you heard from Professor Nikormak, this, this uh, method, although it's precise, it's quite bulky and uh, not applicable to all experiments. Uh, so we developed another method, which is based on the scattering image from the fiber, because the fiber is not uh, uh, completely homogeneous. It has some imperfections uh, on the surface and this, this nanoscale imperfections creating the scattering. And when we capture this in the far field, uh, we can tell what's the polarization at the waist, at least at certain points. So when it's uh, horizontal, we have maximum scattering, vertical minimum, and diagonal, anti-diagonal, they they have different position of the center of mass for this uh, uh, scattered light. And uh, also in some, in some experiments, when the fiber gets thicker, uh, this scattering in the far field gets exponentially weaker. So we have to, to use a very, a very sensitive cameras and we deal with high noises. So uh, an alternative method is to use an auxiliary fiber. It doesn't have to be uh, very precisely placed. You can just uh, drop it on the fiber, uh, stick it with the tape and then remove it after the polarization control. And this provides us uh, with about uh, uh, thousand fold enhancement actually in the scattering without enhancing the noises. So it's quite handy. All right, uh, now I'm switching to the uh, optomechanics itself. So I'm going to look at the uh, propulsion uh, of, uh, of the microparticles near the nanofiber. So if we send uh, uh, some fundamental mode into the fiber and bring uh, the electric microparticle, so the, part, the particle will uh, be a subject to the uh, gradient force, which brings the particle to the fiber. And then there is a scattering force, which is pushing the particle along uh, the waste in the direction of propagation. And this is the simulations in COMSOL. Uh, so we have this uh, scattering force and uh, uh, gradient force. Um, so we can find some optimum fiber diameter uh, to explore this uh, interaction. And uh, you can see that uh, we can get uh, propulsion. So the, the particles are moving along the fiber and stay trapped uh, in the transverse plane. Um, so uh, if we add more particles to the fiber, uh, these particles can actually talk to each other because they scatter some of the light uh, back into the fiber. And this light is uh, interfering with uh, the mode which propagates in the fiber. And this is altering the, the trapping potential uh, for the second particle. So it will be trapped at certain distance from the first one. So there is some minimum in the potential. And uh, as we add more and more particles, uh, they will form this uh, kind of chain and the overall propulsion will increase uh, in its speed because the particles are scattering more light. And uh, we actually can get this optical binding uh, even without any light sent into the fiber because uh, the particles can still talk uh, to each other through this fiber if we uh, eliminate them with some external light. So this is a model. We have a couple of uh, nanoparticles next to the waveguide and we eliminate with a plane wave. And uh, th this, uh, the light which is scattered around and into the fiber is creating this potential wells uh, for the particles where, the, uh, where they get trapped and the traps are equidistant along the way, uh, waveguide and they actually get more and more uh, stiff uh, with more particles added. So it's uh, quite an interesting result because you can optically trap one particle, let's say with tweezers, and then you can control the whole, the whole train of these particles along the waste. Um, and this is the proposed experiment uh, which hasn't been realized. Um, so this is a uh, simulation results uh, by Ivan Toftal. You can, you can check this paper if you are curious. Uh, so uh, we were also thinking about the enhancement of this uh, propulsion by adding metal uh, uh, to, the, to the system. So uh, metal has a high polarizability, much higher than dielectrics. And it was demonstrated then when a uh, golden nanosphere is trapped in optical tweezers, it's possible to achieve uh, enhancement of the optical forces by uh, a few times, by six times in this case of the uh, 40 nanometer uh, nanoparticle. And uh, this is because the, this polarizability is a factor in all the optical forces which is acting on it. And uh, so 
when the particles are small, the absorption is dominant and the scattering is uh, very small, so the particles can, can be effectively trapped. But when, when the particle gets larger, um, so the scattering force has, uh, it becomes important and the, eventually the particle cannot be trapped when it's larger than 170 nanometers, uh, theoretically. But uh, in practice, actually, it has been observed that the particle can be trapped even with a diameter of uh, over 200 nanometers. This was in water. So why it is possible? It's because the, the uh, practical particles are actually not exactly spheres because the way they are synthesized, they, they have some irregular shape and the shape anisotropy is creating some, some extra stiffness for the particle in the uh, longitudinal direction. But the major problem with, uh, with this uh, solid gold particles is that uh, there is a heating and it's proportional to absorption cross-section. So it's a cube of the radius. So uh, with uh, increasing radius, we can get uh, um, hundreds of degrees of heating and uh, eventually the water will boil and uh, the, the, actually the, the gold can melt itself. So um, uh, uh, we, we were thinking about using the particles which are called Janus particles. So it's a composite between the, the dielectric particle and uh, uh, metallic coating. So there is this uh, golden cap, which is a few tens of nanometer thick. And uh, these particles were first explored in a large beam, like a Gaussian weakly, weakly focused beam. And uh, these are silica particles which aggregate in the center of the beam with high intensity. And the Janus particles actually tend to make this uh, kind of uh, clumps uh, at the area of the uh, peak gradient of the field because of the thermal motion. And we were curious how, uh, is it actually possible to, uh, to trap and propel these particles with a nanofiber? So first we did some simulations. Uh, this is uh, results from COMSOL. Uh, this is the model of the particle. Uh, this is actually a thin cap. And we sent some, some light into the fiber, this 1064 nanometer laser beam. And uh, we have a strong dependence of the uh, enhancement of the, uh, of the propulsion and the gradient, uh, um, uh, gradient force compared to the silica particle. And uh, this uh, strong dependence is on the um, orientation of the golden cap, which actually we don't know how it's going to be oriented in the experiment. Um, so we did the experiment. Again, we have the polarization controller here. Uh, to partially control the polarization, set it to uh, horizontal. This is the particle. And we observe the particle motion with the camera. So this is typical Janus particles, the half coated with gold and uh, silica particles of the same size. And uh, this is our results. So this is silica and uh, with 10 nanometer thick gold coating, we achieved some faster propulsion and uh, the optimum was with 20 nanometer gold and actually thicker gold particles we, we could not even trap uh, probably because of thermal effects. And uh, you can see how it's uh, propelled and uh, 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 the propulsion is uh, faster for higher power and then it's even faster but it gets uh, er erratic um, probably because of thermal effects uh, for higher powers. All right. Um, now I'm going to talk about the rotational motion of the electric uh, microspheres next to the optical nanofibers. So this is based on the uh, theoretical work by uh, Pham Lee Ken. Um, so if we, if we have um, rotating polarization in the nanofiber waveguide, uh, the, uh, there is an azimuthal component of the field because of the spiraling, uh, and, we, and we get the spiraling of the, of the pointing vector around the fiber. And if we introduce the particle into the uh, near field of the nanofiber, it shall acquire this negative uh, azimuthal force. So negative meaning that it's, it's, going to it's going to rotate around the nanofiber in the direction opposite to the circulation of the energy. So it's a quite of, uh, kind of surprising result. And uh, to realize this experimentally, uh, we actually needed to control the polarization um, so th this was uh, one of the first um, first attempts without the polarization controlled, and we could see that the particle was rotated. 
and uh, then we further refine this study. Um, so first of all, we combined two beams to uh, cancel the propulsion of the particle and focus on the rotation. And so these were some simulations uh, done uh, by uh, Ivan Toftu. So we could find the optimum fiber radius uh, for, uh, for this rotational experiments. And uh, we could predict what would be the rotation frequency uh, achievable. So for the, for the polystyrene particles, uh, diameter of three, three microns, we could achieve something like 25 uh, hertz of rotation per watt of, uh, of optical power. And uh, this is a scheme of our experimental approach. Again, we have the polarization control in both beams and we change the helicity parameter, which is uh, the third stocks parameter defining the uh, ellipticity of polarization in both beams um, by the quarter wave plates. And we are measuring the uh, back scattering, uh, scattering of the, of the light by the particle. And uh, it shows these beatings of signal on the detector, and this correspond to the rotation frequency. And uh, we have confirmed this way uh, that the, the force on the particle is indeed negative because it's uh, proportional to this helicity parameter taken with the opposite sign. And this is the uh, quantitative study. Uh, you see this nice uh, uh, trend, which is linear with a gradient of minus one for the rotation frequency. Uh, right, so the final project I'm going to talk about is the uh, is about the transfer spin of light, which is quite a bizarre concept. So it, it has been developed mostly in the last decade. And uh, it concerns, uh, so uh, it appears because of the rotations of the field uh, in the plane of propagation. So if we have the plane wave, the, uh, all the electric field is in the uh, transverse plane and uh, there is only longitudinal uh, spin we can achieve on the particle and the particle can rotate around the direction of propagation. Uh, but if we have, let's say, uh, evanescent wave, then this electric field vector is making this uh, circulations uh, in the transverse direction. So this is creating this transverse spin, um, which is uh, falling uh, quickly away from, from the uh, uh, from the surface at which the wave uh, is uh, uh, is getting evanescent. All right, and uh, this is similar to the rotation of the of the bicycle wheel, uh, which is creating this transverse um, uh, moment of inertia, and it was called the photonic wheel by uh, uh, by the scientists who who published this. Uh, they were um, one of the first ones in the field. And uh, uh, there is a proposal for the optomechanic and the de detection, detection of this uh, uh, transfer spin through torques up, um, exerted on the metallic particle. So this is gold uh, nanoparticle near the uh, uh, glass uh, prism where we have the total internal reflection and this creates the evanescent field and they should be uh, all three components of the, of the spin. So longitudinal and uh, both transverse components. And uh, another proposal uh, for detection of this is through the uh, field, re field reconstruction. And this has been done by uh, scanning a small nanoparticle through the field and uh, detecting the far field scattering. Uh, uh, so in, in our work, we have followed this optomechanical detection um, idea, but not exactly with a prism uh, because it's, it's not realistic, we think, uh, experimentally. So instead of that, we, we took uh, optical nanofiber to which we can uh, approach uh, from the side with, uh, with some particle. And here the particle was uh, anisotropic bipolar microsphere, which have this orientation of the optical axis. And uh, this particle was spinning in optical tweezers, which uh, have this uh, spin angular momentum and create this torque. And we aligned this torque with the uh, transfer spin component, which we wanted to explore. So in this case, it's a perpendicular component to the surface normal. Uh, there is another component which is parallel to the surface normal. And in principle, it's possible to detect it, but it's 
it's trickier because uh, actually this component it can change sign uh, if the if the dipoles and the particle uh, are magnetic uh, and not electric and we have a large particle which is multipolar so the picture is quite complicated and uh, we have our theoretical collaborators working on that at the moment uh, all right so this is the experimental approach we have polarization compensators two beams sent into the fiber uh, actually we have one beam at a time only and they create this transfer spin and we have a particle trapped in a tweezer uh, from uh, one side of the fiber and we detect the forward scattered light and extract the first tox parameter dependent on time and it shows us the oscillations uh, following the rotation of the particle and these are some qualitative results so when we uh, switch on the, the laser beam you, we see uh, that the rotation of the particle is uh, is increasing um, because the two spins from the from the tweezer and from the fiber are aligned uh, parallel and when we switch the other beam we have uh, anti-parallel alignment and the particle is slowing down and uh, if we move the particle to the other side uh, this uh, picture is flipping because the uh, spin is the transfer spin is locked to the direction of propagation of light and if we keep the particle on this side but we switch the direction of the spin and tweezers again we flip this picture and also we have studied uh, the case of unpolarized light which is uh, quite interesting because when we change the field from paraxial where there is no transfer spin to non-paraxial uh, even with unpolarized light we can get some uh, significant components um, of the transfer spin so these are uh, results from the uh, nature photonics paper uh, published only, only two months ago so they used uh, again the uh, direct reconstruction of the field by scattering and this is our result with optomechanics so this is the uh, change of the of the frequency with respect to the frequency of rotation with no light uh, in the fiber so we have enhancement uh, acceleration of the particle and deceleration depending on the orientation of the spin and tweezers and with unpolarized light Again, we have the same effect, but twice uh, weaker, but it's still present. Uh, all right, so to summarize, optical nanofiber is a powerful tool for exploring light micro interactions. Uh, in most um, experiments, we, we need uh, complete polarization control, which we can readily achieve with single mode fibers. Uh, and we can use um, evanescent field of nanofiber to produce nano, uh, trapping, propulsion, binding, and rotation of small particles. Uh, and uh, adding metals to the dielectric particles may lead to enhancement of this optomechanical effects. And we can use this optical manipulation uh, for probing electromagnetic fields uh, near nanoscale waveguides, uh, which, which we did for the detection of the transfer speed. Um, all right, this is the end of my talk. I would like to thank, uh, to thank uh, Okinawa Institute of Science and Technologies and uh, Japanese Society for Promotion of Science. Thank you. Thank you. So we now take questions from the audience. Are there any questions? So Dr. Takachenko, I'm curious about your uh, uh, the pre uh, the the, f the early part of your talk on uh, the possible formation of your arrays of your dielect dielectrics particles i guess oh this was about the binding mm -hmm. uh, yes so is it like an uh, an alternative way to uh, trap uh, these kind of objects um, without i mean without using optical lattices i mean is it an alternative trapping or this just happens to uh, dielectric spheres. Uh, so this is alternative trapping uh, to optical lattice because it's actually optical an optical lattice created along the nanofiber. So it's oh, okay. a dimensional lattice. Uh, it's actually similar to what we would achieve with contrapropagating beams uh, interfering. Um, I see. Okay.
Okay, questions? Hello, Dr. Tukachenko. Hello. I have a question about the last part of the uh, spin of electromagnetic wave mm -hmm. correlation. And is there a quantum mechanical interpretation of such phenomenon? Because the diagram you showed here uh, seems to be based on like classical electrodynamics. Uh, yes, this is all classical picture. Uh, I haven't heard about the quantum description of this. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, we, we cannot treat this, uh, this waves as a stream of photons anymore. Um, so uh, no, I, I don't know. So this spin is more like uh, optomechanical phenomen ph phenomena. So the spin we detect is uh, optomechanical. So it's uh, actual spinning of the particle. Uh, yeah, but what happens at the quantum level, uh, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK. Any more questions? So if there are not, let's thank our uh, Dr. Kachenko again. Thank you. Here in this uh, afternoon session is uh, Mr. Gupta.